Hi, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's Alan Schimmel for Tech Strong Gang. I hope your Monday went well after that long holiday weekend. You know, Mondays are always tough when you come in off a three-day weekend. But now it's Tuesday and you really have no excuse. We're in the swing of things this week. We actually have a tech field day, or networking field day, I guess is the proper term, right, Stephen? That's right. That's right. Uh, yep. Coming up tomorrow and Thursday, which of course we'll be streaming live here on Tech Strong TV. Might as well introduce our our uh, gang members today, and then Stephen, I'll do you last, and you can talk a little bit about networking field day. But joining us is uh, the one and only J.P. Morgenthau. The Dean Mike Rizard, and of course, Mr. Tech Field Day himself, Stephen Foskett. Stephen, what's up with Networking Field Day this year? Yep. So this is uh, the second one of uh, 2025. Uh, I think we might even have a third one. Um, yeah, we've got Hedgehog coming back, uh, CPacket, Aviz, and uh, probably the biggest uh, news maker of the of the crew will be HPE Networking coming in because. You know, they just got approval to purchase Juniper. So I can't wait to hear what HPE, Aruba, Juniper have to say. At I, I think this is their first public appearance following the uh, announcement that they got approval. Cool. Cool. It'll be interesting. And as I said, we'll have it here live uh, on Tech Strong TV after the gang on Wednesday and Thursday. So let's turn to Tuesday's news. Mike, Apple made news in AI. And it wasn't necessarily negative. True. Who would have thought, and this is our second day in a row of talking about AI coding tools, but Apple is using diffusion techniques to write code differently and maybe more efficiently than humans do. And it's an interesting uh, take because I got to wonder if the way we write code and software is going to fundamentally change in the age of AI, but we'll dive into that in a minute. JP, what's your take on what's going on here? Because it doesn't seem like we're writing software the way our grandparents did, for sure. There's a, there's a lot of things that I'm questioning about uh, how we interact with these new creations. Uh, I actually wrote about one of these things recently with regard to resumes. Why are we still using an 1800s you know, created construct to give to a machine to analyze whether the person is a good fit or not? Right. It, it certainly can analyze individuals on so many dimensions, we need new inputs. And the same thing with how we think about coding is, you know, as a person, I'm coding, I, I need to think a little structure. My brain needs the structure, the top down, right? And it, for me, you know, it starts out, I can uh, create a, 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 a framework or a skeleton, and then I can put comments in, this is what I want to do here, this is what I want to do, and then slowly and surely start to add more. And eventually my mind goes, oh, I've seen that before. Let me refactor that so that I get reuse, right? So my brain's got background processes going on, analyzing as I'm coding, right? But the AI doesn't need to do that. The AI can kind of like take a high level snapshot and say, this is kind of what it looks like. And so, and it generate version one. And in the time it took me to write my code, which probably would be, you know, an hour to two hours. It, it, it can do hundreds of thousands of generations reiterating on that code, making it better, right? And so that's what's happening with the diffusion model versus the next token model. The diffusion model saying, yeah, let me start with, uh, you know, I think it looks like this. Nope, that's not right. It, maybe it looks like this. No, nope. but each time it's getting clearer and clearer. Remember the old days when we had bandwidth issues and maps used to come in like that, right? You'd have, first you'd have the very, very coarse grain, low res, low number of data. And then over time, depending upon, you know, the, you know, how much, how, how uh, clear you needed the image to be, the next, you, you know, the next level down and the next level down, each one being more and more data. That's exactly the diffusion model and how it works. And to see it applied to code, is interesting. I, I, I do think that the other side of the story is where did Apple come out of left field with this? What made them, what made them move to this, right? What are they? Uh, so obviously Apple has been quiet. They are certainly not out in front making a lot of noise like some of the others, but you know, they have done, you know, had Siri for years. They have had, 
you know, an investment in, you know, integrating AI into their operating systems and phones. And, uh, and clearly they're on a path where they're doing research internally. I guess Apple just doesn't feel a need right now to be a noisemaker, right? To them, it's more about, it's a great tool. We add it in for people, our users. We use it ourselves to help be more productive. Right now, we don't need to demonstrate that we're, you know, that we're king of the hill. We're not going to fight the king of the hill battle with Anthropic and Microsoft and Google, right? We don't need to be there. That's not our game. Our game is our devices. Our game is our operating system and machines. And, and, and it's really user experience. Here's the thing that I kind of wonder about as I look at all of this. So we're finding a more efficient way to write code using AI agents. And I have to wonder, if I look back in time, we have all these programming languages that we created so humans could interact with machines. Look at Java and everything else. They are higher levels of abstraction. Steven, if I look at this, will the AI agents at some point just decide that they're going to create a more efficient programming language to write code? Maybe even, who knows, it'll be an assembly or something. And we're just going to you know, move to a whole different software era. And I may not even understand how the software is written. Well, I certainly hope not, uh, because if we don't understand how the software is written, then it sounds like nobody does. Um, I think it's important to remember, as JP was mentioning here, that this is not some kind of, uh, I mean, this is fundamentally some new technology because they're using this diffusion concept where they essentially continually iterate on the entire section or the entire uh, subroutine uh, rather than just predicting the next token which of course was completely doomed to failure when it came to producing uh, high quality code. But even so, um, I, I still don't know that I would trust uh, blindly AI to spit out code that no one looked at and no one could review. Um, and I hope that nobody else would either, though I guess vibe coding is a thing. Um, it, it's maybe not a good thing if you want good code. Um, you know, but but you do bring up an interesting aspect here, and that's the different languages. I mean, we've heard of, for example, um, COBOL and Fortran code being improved dramatically by AI, uh, especially in terms of AI documentation and uh, AI tuning. We've also heard of, um, you know, the, the questions about Apple's Swift language. There's been a lot of talk in the Apple community about whether Swift is really going to succeed because Apple just has not been able to put, you know, despite the might of the company, they haven't been able to put enough, uh, you know, development effort behind it. In fact, I wonder if perhaps the result of this paper is that it would be used, this technology could be used to improve Swift. But one of the challenges there is that there just isn't a lot of examples. And since AI, uh, as it exists, large language models are just basically uh, they ingest and then disgorge uh, tremendous uh, amounts of, of uh, text based on what they've seen. The fact that there isn't that much Swift code to train a model on means that it's harder to get a model to spit out Swift code. But maybe this diffusion technique works better. That that was where my mind went when I saw this uh, announcement. Uh, w what about you? Well, I, well, let me just answer Stephen's point because I thought about your issue with what amounts to explainability of code written by an AI that we don't understand. But maybe I'll just go to a different AI agent and ask it to explain what the AI just did to me in a way that I can understand it and therefore solve that particular problem, and then we can be more efficient. And if I need to check up on an AI agent, I'll just have another AI agent do it. That's the theory. J just a clarification of a point that was made earlier. They have come up with their own language. The only reason they continue to produce a program, a structured programming language, is for us. So that it's a means of communicating with us in a way that we can comprehend what they did. And I can tell you as somebody who's been working you know, heavily over the past month with, uh, you know, AI generated code that, you know, there's a lot I need to go back and tell them like, no, nah, no, nah, he didn't get this right. <laughs> go back and do this again. Right. It really is like working with a junior programmer. So I've got a bunch of thoughts here. So first of all, this particular instance, JP, you're right. It is sort of how a map got used to get kind of 
filled in. But it, it's more akin, if you ever watched like how ChatGPT draws a graphic, it's layers and layers and layers and layers. And, and, when it re, and when you tell it to make a change, it can't just like take a layer off. It really kind of almost starts over. So it's it's a very, it, you know, it's not a linear way of, of drawing a picture, nor is it a linear way of writing a code. But that being said, you know, from an anthropo, anthropo, anthropological perspective, to your point about if we let, you know, if you don't have a human do it, then you don't know and we won't know. You know, if human history is full of this. There were probably good reasons. There was good reasons why Jews adopted kosher food, right? Don't eat shellfish. Don't eat pork. Because these were foods that actually went bad first. Right, they were the first foods to spoil, so there was probably a good common sense, real reason why shellfish was not kosher. But over time, and with refrigeration and everything else, that's no longer, you know, a viable reason not to eat shellfish. But nevertheless, this is the way we do it, and so it's still not kosher. I suspect we may have a similar thing with coding. Just because humans did it not, you know, and we're looking at what AI is doing, we're saying, wait a second, it's not kosher. Right? It, well, because they didn't have, we didn't have refrigeration then, or we didn't have the ability to look at it in a nonlinear way and parallel process and do all these things. It doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it different. And and so over time, yes, it's a junior programmer today, but today's junior programmers are tomorrow's crackerjack programmers. And the same will be true here. And it'll do it its way. And we may just all go along for it because it's kosher, right? In terms of new in terms of new technology, though, let's not forget what Apple did here was evolutionary, not revolutionary. They built on top of, I think it's an Alibaba. Quan, yeah. It's a good library there. I like one. And you know, I don't know how well that will sit with the rest of the world. People are liable to say Alibaba has some sort of backdoor into it or can sabotage it or who the heck knows it's open it's source. open sourced on hugging yeah. face anybody wants to review the model can review the model so. absolutely well but look what we saw with deep sea right that was open source too uh it's from china it's tainted at some level with a certain segment of our industry and population but give apple credit you know a lot of people don't realize the real strength of Microsoft is their channel and specifically their developer channel, right? It's huge. Apple has an okay developer channel. You're right. Swift hasn't become the, the standard that everyone thought it was, would become. But look, maybe this is a way for them to piggyback and, and you know, leapfrog over in, into something here. I, it is actually kind of more revolutionary than you're giving it credit for. Sure, they're using an existing model, which actually, as JP mentioned at the top, I think that's a great idea. And it shows that Apple is not trying to build their own foundational models. I think that's a wise move for them. Uh, the last thing we need is yet another foundational model. I think the, the revolutionary thing is using this diffusion technique instead of just predicting the next token. And, and that uh, could result in a really novel way of using this technology and, and may produce better results. Time will tell. Time will tell. All right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the applications will be better because one of the issues that humans have is thinking about processing things in parallel is difficult for a human and you have to kind of structure that. Maybe easier for machines to build applications where I've got 10, maybe hundreds or thousands of processes that are going along simultaneously, which would be much more interesting. There are, there are considerable uh, performance uh, improvements that you can see when using diffusion over linear. Uh, it's quite noticeable. 
you know, you can really see it like if you were to use something like a uh, VS code and hooked into, you know, one of those coding agents, if you know, you can watch it build the serial code and it's, it's kind of slow. And, you know, this thing, this is just in the background, re doing iteration and every iteration the mutations of, you know, what was it? We, we learned during COVID, right? The thing, how viruses, how many generations viruses can create in a short period of time, right? It's, it, it's at that level of mutation. My question is it, is it more or less energy efficient to do this? Because by doing things in parallel, as things change over here, they got to change over here. And that means you got to redo stuff. I wonder, if I, and I don't know the answer. I'm just speculating. I wonder if it's less energy efficient to do that. That might be something we look into. Anyway, we're, we're out of time on this segment. Let's take a quick break and come back and, and talk about some more here on TechStrong Gang.